Okay, welcome uh, to this lecture. This is lecture uh, 14 on chemical kinetics. Again, let us um, start from where we ended in the last uh, class. So, in the last class, uh, what uh, we were doing was we were looking at this uh, energy profile right, of a certain reaction and we were taking an elementary reaction. The elementary reaction was this ethyl bromide reacting, reacting with uh, hydroxyl ions to give ethyl alcohol and bromide. Okay. And then we were trying to have uh, a feeling of what this energy profile is trying to tell you. Now, before this we had looked at the meaning of this reaction coordinate which is the horizontal axis and the potential energy which is your vertical axis and what these tell us about the reaction when you move from the reactant side to the product side. Okay. So, now looking at this um, reaction again what we can say is remember we are looking at the molecular level that is a molecule of CH3 CH2 Br. Uh, interacting with uh, a molecule of this uh, you know hydroxyl ion OH minus right. Then what we can say is that as you know as these come close to each other as these molecules come close to each other then you know as during the reaction as these molecules which are the reactant molecules right they come close to each other, then these interact. Okay. So, these interact and as a consequence the chemical bonds, so these interact and then what will happen is chemical bonds distort. Okay. So, what will happen is chemical bonds distort. The moment the chemical bonds distort, so the moment the chemical bonds distort and if we move on to the next page, then we can say that the potential energy increases. Right? So, when the reactants were just by themselves, they were not reacting. So, they were in the stable form. Right? Now, the moment they started coming close to each other, bond distortion started taking place right? and then the potential energy started increasing. Now, at distances, at distances which are like typical of the chemical bond lengths, chemical bond lengths, the reactant species, the reactant species become partially bonded, become partially bonded together and then new chemical bonds form. Right. So, this is you are looking at the progress of the reaction. So, the, when they are close to each other, the distances being of the bond lengths, then the reaction species become partially bonded and new chemical bonds start forming. The moment the new chemical bonds start forming, then at this point what we can say is, at this point what we can say is that the new chemical bonds form, that is the new chemical bonds form can say the potential energy reaches maximum. Okay. The potential energy reaches maximum. At the point where the potential energy reaches maximum, this situation is referred to as the transition state. So, this situation now is referred to as a transition state. This transition state is often represented by a symbol like this, okay, by a symbol like this which is called a 
double dagger, a symbol like this which is called a double dagger. So, that means, if I go back to this uh, you know the, uh, po uh, the potential energy. So, here this transition state I will be having this double dagger. So, this is my transition state I can see the potential energy is at the maximum right. So, everything is with reference to this diagram ok. Now, the species the partially bonded species I am having at the transition state. So, next I can write the molecular species present at the transition state at the transition state is referred to as again okay, this is important the activated complex okay it is referred to as the activated complex this activated complex is a transient species it is it is not please remember this one is not an intermediate this is not an intermediate it is just a transient species the activated complex is that complex is that complex which is formed at the top which means so the activated complex is forming here the activated complex is forming here right i can write so here i have activated complex. So, the activated complex is forming where? The activated complex is forming at the transition state and what is the transition state? Transition state is the point where your potential energy is the maximum in your energy profile diagram right. And this you know gaining information, gaining information about this activated complex right which pertains to that point of the potential energy maximum this being the transition state is of great interest. You always would like to know what your transition state is that means, what your activated complex is in terms of structure in the transition state. This is of great fundamental interest in chemical kinetics ok. So, now coming back. So, you look at this what have, have we learned thus far there are two axes the horizontal axis being the reaction coordinate the vertical axis being the potential energy right. When the reactants come close to each other there is distortion the potential energy slowly increases like this right. Then a point comes then a point comes where the potential energy is the maximum that means, the reactants and the reactants are partially bonded to each other within allowed chemical bond distances and the point where the potential is the maximum this point is or this situation or this point is referred to as your transition state because transition state because once you have reached the maximum then you go a little bit to the other side you fall back to the product. So, that is what your transition state is you are transitioning your transition state means you are transitioning that means you are changing transition means change you are changing from the reactants to the products through this point which is the maximum and your potential energy diagram. And the complex the complex that is forming between your reactants is called the activated complex which is formed at the transition state. This activated complex remember is not a intermediate it is only having a very transient very very transient very very short lived lifetime that means, it is very short lived there for a very very small amount of time and it is barely barely observable it is not a intermediate intermediates can be observed activated complex no. Hence, this is a, a big difference between an activated complex and an intermediate. So, the activated complex is necessarily the one which is formed at your transition state ok. Now, having said this having looked at this increase in potential energy then when we move to the other side of the transition state you start going over to the product side ok. You realize that we are going through 
a change in the potential energy, right? But before doing that, just let's uh, take another quick example uh, so that um, you know this diagram is made a little more clear. So, for example, consider this following reaction: A2 plus B2 going to 2AB. Now, let this be an elementary reaction. Elementary reaction means the way it is written, that is how it is taking place in one step, right. So, then what I can write is, I can say, right, you know, this is just an example, uh, just an hypothesis, it is not necessary that it has to take place this way. I can say, I have A, A, right, plus B, B, then it goes through something like this. Let me write that as A, A, B, B, okay. then, then it goes over to the product side, okay. then it goes over to 2 A, B. So, how is it 2 A, B? You get 1 A, B from here and 1 A, B from here, is not it? So, that means this I can write as A, B, A, B. So, what are the distortions you are looking at? So, when this A 2 reacts with B 2 to give 2 A, B, what is going to happen? The A A bond has to break, the B B bond has to break, right. Then the A B bond has to form, this A B bond also has to form. This this species, which is looking like a square, this species is your activated complex, right. So, remember now this activated complex is it present at the transition state. So, this activated complex is present at your transition state. What has happened at the activated complex, or what you know, what is so, this is a hypothesis again, just for example. So, the activated complex is such, you see, as I move from A2 and B2 to 2 AB, what am I going to do? I am going to break the A bond, I am going to break the BB bond, but I am going to form also 2 AB bonds. This is exactly what is happening out here. What it is telling you is that this one is partially broken between AA, the bond between BB is partially broken, then 1 A and 1 B, 1 atom of A, 1 atom of B is being involved in partial bond formation. Again, the other atom of A and other atom of B is involved in partial bond formation. Okay, so, you have progressed in terms of the breakage, you have also progressed in terms of bond formation and that is why this is called an activated complex, where you have a little bit of bond breaking taking place or whatever, bond breaking taking place and also bond formation taking place. When we move on to the other side, we get these 2 AB molecules, that is why it is called 2 AB and that is why this one is referred to as your activated complex. Now, think about now think about this from here to here and think about your potential energy diagram. So, what is happening? Your reactants were for this your reactants were A 2 plus B 2, right. So, this were your reactants. Then what happened was when this reactant started coming close together, the A A bond started breaking and the B B bond also started breaking, hence the potential energy started moving up. Then you came to a maximum. What happened at the maximum? At the maximum, what had happened was you had the partial breakage of the A bond, the partial breakage of the B bond. Not only that, you also had the partial formation of A B bond and the partial formation of A B bond. Then a slight push, that means a slight move in the other direction. In the other direction, what happens is now the A B bond forms, A B bond forms, and the A and B bond they snap, that means they break, and that is why, and that is how you would read your energy profile in terms of this uh, example, right, and this being the activated complex. And I again, I hope that this discussion gives you an idea of what this energy profile is trying to tell you, okay. One more thing you have to realize what happens is that as you go from the reactant to the product side, you go through an energy barrier. So, so, let this be the energy barrier. That means, you move up in terms of energy. So, this is your activation energy, right. Remember, this is the activation energy, which is say E A. 
this is the activation energy, right. Once you have activated them enough, they have moved to the top, then they can go over to the product side, okay. You know, let me uh, try to remind you about the, uh, that energy distribution, that, that kinetic energy distribution, huh? that only those molecules which will have at least this amount of energy, remember the shaded portions, at least this amount of energy and more would go over to the product side, this is what you are saying. That means, if the reactants have to go over to the product side, I need to move up to the top and to move to the top of the cell or the potential energy, I need this amount of energy. This is called the activation energy, right. Now, the question is, the question which you, uh, you know, ask yourself now is, how does it gain this energy? So, let us again talk about this uh, reaction. CH3 CH2 Br plus OH minus, how would it, how would these reactants, how would these reactants move like this to the top of the energy. So, what happens is, this energy which is E A, this E A, it is attained through collisions between the reactants. So, they collide, collide, collide. So, once on collision what happens is, they gain energy, right. Once they gain energy, those collisions which will give rise to sufficient energy that is E A and they move to the top they would be having a very good chance of moving over to the product side. So, this is how at a certain temperature collisions in the reaction system, that is the collisions in the reaction system giving rise to the kinetic energy, right, because of collisions will bring about this attainment of the activation energy, right. Once the activation energy is attained, then there is every chance that the reactant molecules will go over to the product side and that is typically how it happens. So, now you understand when I raise the temperature, what is going to happen? When I raise the temperature, the collisions would be happening more vigorously because I have increased the thermal energy, right. It is more moving larger velocity, right, more speed, more uh, uh, collisions happening with greater vigor and because collisions happen with greater vigor, then the reaction rate will also increase with increase in temperature, right. And that is typically how the thing happens. Because remember, the activation energy is independent of temperature, that is what was one of the assumptions we had taken when we were talking about the temperature dependence of reaction rates. Thus, higher the temperature, more vigorous are the collisions and hence it is easier to attain this E A, the activation energy that means go to the top of the hill and thus the reaction rate increases because more and more reactant molecules can easily go over to the product side as compared to a lower temperature. Now, you can ask a question. So, the question is, let us go back to the other reaction C 6 H 5 C H 2 C L plus O H minus giving C 6 H 5 C H 2 O H plus C L minus, right here. We had two steps C 6 H 5 C H 2 C L, the first elementary step giving C 6 H 5 C H 2 plus plus C L minus. The next one was C 6 H 5 C H 2 plus plus O H minus giving C 6 H 5 C H 2 O H. So, these were reactions 3 and 4, right. So, this was 3, this was, this were reactions 3 and 4. Now, the question that might come to your mind is, okay, if I am talking about collisions between the reactants, I have two reactant species out here, they are colliding, right, they are gaining this through the kinetic energy of collisions, they are gaining this activation energy and then they move out to the product side. But if I look at this composite reaction and if I look at my first step, the first elementary step, the first element step is only one reactant species, right. 
the first administrator has only one reactant species, then how can collisions happen? You might be thinking like this, right? Because for this reactant or for this reaction, I had two reactant species, they were colliding, no problem to understand. But what about this? C C X five C C L, the uh, reaction number three. How can this happen? Remember, for any any reaction to happen, I will always have to cross an energy barrier, right? As an energy, so I'm talking about those reactions where an energy barrier exists, and these reactions are such that there will be energy barrier, and for them to go over to the product side. So, for example, for CCH5, CH2Cl to go over to this cation plus Cl minus, a CCl bond has to be broken. That means, I have to go over a potential energy maximum. But how can I do that? Because I have only one reactant species. So, this anomaly, so is this an anomaly at all? Would you think it is an anomaly? Can we explain that? It is actually very easily explained. So, for reactions involving single reactant species like this, a single reactant, a single reactant, there is no other species, right? So, it rules out collisions, okay. But here, I need reactant which is C6H5. CH2Cl, energy is needed to break the Cl, sorry, CCl bond, but there is no other reactant right there is no other reactant so there is no other reactant so do we say will collision be ruled out okay i do not have any other reactant species the only thing that i have is c6 h5 c2 cl which has to break a ccl bond to go in order to go over to this cation plus Cl minus, there is no other reactant. Does that mean that there is no collision happening at all? That is not true. So, what happens is, the what happens is the following. The C6H5, CH2Cl collides with its, sorry, its own molecules. So, there are many molecules in the reaction system, though these molecules C6, H5, C6, CL can collide with each other, right. That means, the reactants collide with each other and also, if it is, if it is being done in a solvent, the C6, H5, CH2, CL can also collide with the solvent molecules. So, what is it colliding with then? I need, I do not need another reactant. I have so many C6, H5, C6, CL molecules out there that all these molecules can collide and through this kinetic energy, I gain that activation energy through which it goes over to the top or it can also collide with the solvent molecules which are out there and do the same thing. Right? Hence, I do not need another reactant. So, you should not be thinking it like that way. So, it is not that I, I can only have collisions if I need, if I have two reactants in the system. Because when you are talking about a system, you are not talking about one molecule, you are talking about many, many molecules. So, if it is a mole of reactants, which you are talking about Avogadro number of molecules, right. There are so many other C6, H5, C2 cell molecules. That means, all then what happens is that all the other molecules will be colliding amongst each other depending upon the temperature of the reaction and hence it will attain the activation energy. Alternatively or along with this or parallelly or simultaneously together with this, if you have taken this in a solvent which is say a water, then there are many water molecules, the CC, H2C2 cell molecules will also collide with the water molecules and hence also gain activation energy, thus go over to the top of the potential energy and then move on to the product side and hence I get 
the top reaction C C H 5 C H 2 plus going to or uh, uh, plus C or minus right. So, this is how you should think and finally and finally the difference in potential energy between between the products and reactants that means what i take is the difference is what potential energy of products minus potential energy of reactants and this is equal to the enthalpy change this is equal to the enthalpy change right now let's go back to the our uh, diagram the energy profile that we had drawn before so here if you look at the energy profile now so this is the potential energy of reactant this is the potential energy of product the potential energy of product is less than the potential energy of reactant so that means the delta h in this case is negative so if i write this one is okay so if i write let's see if i use a different color mm, yeah so if i use a different color so for example this is delta h right so what is delta h delta h is the potential of your products minus the potential of your reactants now for this one you can see the product is at a lower potential energy than that of the reactants which means the reaction is exothermic so here i can write the delta h is for this profile the delta h is negative why because as defined as defined what is delta h it is the potential of your product minus the potential energy of reactants and you can see out here the potential of your products is this which is lower than the potential energy of reactants so when i take this one and subtract from here i should be getting a negative number because this is higher than this and hence the delta h is negative and i can say that the way this energy profile has been drawn the reaction is exothermic in nature you should now draw a reaction profile where this delta h is positive right based on this discussion you should be able to draw so delta h positive means the potential of your products is higher than the potential of reactants so it will just reverse that means the pro the products will move up reactants will move down so products would be having a higher potential energy than the reactants in that case the delta h would be positive that is the reaction is endothermic in nature so then in a nutshell what we have discussed is the very essential features of an energy profile again to end this part what is this energy profile telling you the energy profile tells you many important things a let's talk about the axis the reaction coordinate it tells you the path the reaction is taking now as the reaction is taking that path the vertical axis which is the potential energy is telling you how the potential energy is changing as the reaction path is being traversed or that means as we are going along the path of the reactants to the products okay number 3 when i go from the reactants to the products right based on this profile i go through a potential energy maximum because from here to here the bond distortion takes place as the bond distortion start taking place the potential energy increases and then i come to a point for an elementary reaction then i come to a point where i reach the maximum of the potential energy right so that maximum scenario is called the transition state and the complex the complex which forms at the maximum the complex which forms at the maximum is called the activated complex the moment the activated complex is formed then if we move on to the other side this being at the top of the energy barrier the energy can now only decrease and it goes over to the products right how do i get this energy or how do the molecules get this energy so if it's a two reactant system a plus b then a will collide with b 
if it is a one reactant system A going to products, then there are so many molecules of A they can collide. The A molecules can also collide with the solvent molecules to get this energy move to the top of the energy barrier and then go over to the product side. And finally, the difference in potential energy between the products and the reactants will define your change in enthalpy. So, if this delta H is negative, it is exothermic, if the delta H is positive, it is endothermic in nature okay? and delta H being defined by this equation. right? Now, see when I you know uh, plotted this or drawn this uh, energy profile, I had said that this is for the reaction between CH2, CH2Br and OH minus. Right? Again a question can come to your mind. The question is, okay, if I have done all these things for the molecule or for the reaction, the two step reaction, the composite reaction, the uh, mixture of two elementary steps, can I draw a possible energy profile for this reaction? Is it possible? So, let us see whether we can draw it. Remember that C C H 5 CH 2 plus is an intermediate. So, if this is an intermediate, if this is an intermediate and based on this, the energy profile can be drawn like okay. So, these are my reactants, these are my products, right. And this is how my energy profile will look like. Because this is how my energy profile looks like, right? And remember, I had potential energy. Out here, and this is my reaction coordinate. Okay. This I out here is my intermediate. This I out here is my intermediate. So for this, for this reaction, for this reaction. The intermediate is C C H 5 C H 2 plus. So, I can write for this reaction it is C 6 H 5 C H 2 plus. So, that is my intermediate, right. Okay. So, what are these? See, there are two humps. Why are there two humps? There are two steps, right. The first step taking me from the reactants to the intermediate right and this I can say is what I will say here. So, this is my transition state which is of often abbreviated as T s, we often abbreviated as T s for step 1. Okay. So, this is step 1 which is essentially the reaction 3 and then you understand. So, this point would be my T s that is transition state for step 2 and as defined before this would be my delta H. So, here you can see that yes I can indeed draw an energy profile for a composite reaction provided I know the composite reaction very well in terms of the intermediates that are, that are coming out. This reaction is very well studied and this carbocation intermediate is proposed to be there. right? And hence what I have done is you can see this is my transition state for step 1. I go from here to here, I form the intermediate. Then the next step is the intermediate reacts with OH minus to form this. So, what are my reactants here? For the first one, my reactants are C6, H5, CH2Cl going to this plus, and then what I have is this one reacts with OH minus, reacts with OH minus to give me the products. So I forgot to write here. Okay. 
here you will be having the uh, here you will be having the activated complex for step 1 activated complex for step 2 but see this is the intermediate i don't say this is the activated complex this is the intermediate this is of lower energy than these two okay so uh, so hence this is extremely important for you to understand that this intermediate and these two are completely different the species i have at the top is my activated complex and the species which is lying at a lower energy lower potential energy is my intermediate okay so yes even for a composite reaction i can draw an energy profile but i have to make sure that i know the reaction mechanism very well which will allow me to draw the energy profile okay other things remaining the same right so um, you know i think we have uh, spent uh, uh, enough time on um, uh, you know these energy profiles talking about these and what they try to uh, tell you now let's move on and uh, let's talk about uh, something which is uh, also very significant for an elementary reaction it's called molecularity it's called molecularity as i had referred uh, to it before too so our common method of classifying elementary reactions is based on its molecularity now how do i say that so what i say is so uh, suppose i have an elementary reaction which goes from a to p suppose i have another elementary reaction which goes like a plus b going to p so all these reactions are elementary right all these reactions being elementary what i say this is a unimolecular reaction this is a bimolecular reaction this is a bimolecular reaction now suppose i have something like um, you know say 2a plus b going to p for example if this is also an elementary reaction then i will say that this is a third molecular reaction okay so the definition of molecularity is like this there is one molecule of a going to p hence it is called unimolecular one molecule of a and one molecule of b makes it two molecules hence it is called bimolecular two molecules of a reacting with molecule of b total of three molecules it is called ter or trimolecular that is what the molecularity is now for an elementary reaction for an elementary reaction what happens is based on this based on this i can write down the rate loss because i know what the molecularity is so like say for a going to p so for a going to p my rate law would be r is equal to k times concentration of a for this reaction a going to p now for the next one a plus b going to p remember all these elementary reactions r is equal to k a b then for the other one the trimolecular the term molecular reaction i can write r is equal to k a squared b now you can see the exponents on the top or the powers on the top a raised to the power 1 hence it is called unimolecular then a raised to the power 1 b raised to the power 1 total 1 plus 1 is 2 and it is called bimolecular then 2a plus b going to p so it is ter trimolecular term molecular we say okay a square p so 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 okay so then what is the significance of this elementary reaction and molecularity what it tells you is that for an elementary reaction for an elementary reaction so let me okay let me write here for an elementary reaction molecularity and order are the same so for an elementary reaction molecularity and order 
are the same. So, this one was unimolecular, remember. This is a unimolecular. So, I can straight away write the right equation as k times concentration of A. The order is 1 because it is unimolecular. Then, so when I say order, order means overall order. So, for this one, it is bimolecular. By molecular, this is A raised to the power 1, B raised to the power 1, 1 plus 1, 2 by molecular. So, the overall order is 2, hence it is bimolecular, right? By uni. So, this is 3 molecules, say so term molecular, 3 molecules, 2 plus 1, 3. I straight away write the rate expression without even thinking about it because for an elementary reaction, I can straight away write the rate expressions because molecular and order are exactly the same. And when I saw, talk about order, I mean the overall order. Okay. So, then I can write this again as the following. The experimental, the experimental overall order of of an elementary reaction of an elementary reaction is the same as molecularity is the same as molecularity okay so this is again extremely important where the overall order and molecularity for an elementary reaction are the same allowing us to straight away write the rate expression right please keep this in mind that molecularity molecularity is a theoretical concept. It is a theoretical concept. Why? Because by looking at, by looking at this, by looking at this, knowing that these are elementary, I am writing or knowing that there is one molecule out here, one molecule of A, one molecule of B, I write down the molecularity. Molecularity means the total number of molecules involved in the reaction. However, order is an experimental quantity. So, this further reinforces the significance of an elementary reaction where we say that theoretically what we say based on the balanced chemical equation is exactly the same as is observed using experiments. So, the order which is an experimental quantity is the same as molecularity which is a theoretical quantity which we look at or which we write by looking at the balanced chemical equation, these are the same for an elementary reaction. Then finally, I can write down for an elementary reaction having done all these, three very important points. It is has to be a single step reaction. Number two must proceed through only one transition state. Okay must proceed to only one transition state. It cannot have multiple transition states because the moment you have multiple transition states, you are talking about multiple elementary steps. That means, a composite reaction. Number 3, molecularity is equal to overall order, keeping in mind that this is a theoretical quantity and this is obtained through experiments right 
this is where the significance of the elementary reaction rise and these are the characteristics of an elementary reaction that one should keep in mind whenever you come across a reaction or whenever you come across a word in a book which says that this reaction is elementary in nature and immediately these three features or characteristics of the elementary reaction should you know come to your mind that okay whenever i'm talking about elementary reaction i'm talking about these three things a single step reaction a reaction which has to proceed by through only one transition state and for that elementary reaction because it is elementary in nature the molecularity is equal to the overall order that means the balanced chemical equation tells me or allows me to write down the rate expression that is k times a times b or k times a or concentration of a or k times something else based on what the molecularity of the reaction is and this is extremely important for us to keep in mind okay so this was uh, you know all about uh, uh, elementary reactions and the molecularity too let's look uh, at uh, our typical uh, you know example right see for let's let's uh, let's look at uh, say this following example okay so the following example goes like this i have two bromine atoms combining to give me the bromine molecule this example one okay so here if i split it up i can write br plus br giving me pr2 and this being an elementary reaction i can straight away write that r is equal to k br pr and these being the same k pr squared okay this was an elementary reaction so i could write it like this let's take another example so let this be example number 2 so another example is say okay let's consider this i2 breaking up into i plus i here the rate is equal to k times i2 i know this is an elementary reaction so i can straight away write this one because i know that it is an elementary reaction having you know gone through this or you know what you are doing right now we can also ask ourselves a question so the question is suppose i have a first order reaction suppose i have a first order reaction you're given a first order reaction right then what can be said about its molecularity again read the question it is a first order reaction and being a first order reaction you're asking can anything be said about its molecularity now think about your answer what will your answer be your answer should be no it cannot be said why because though it is a first order reaction it is not told or no information is provided whether the first order reaction whether the first order reaction is elementary or not if it is not said or if it is not told to you whether it is elementary or not then we cannot say or talk about its molecularity because the molecularity remember molecularity molecularity is only applicable for an elementary 
reaction. It is only applicable for an elementary reaction, only applicable for elementary reaction, which means molecularity has no existence for a complex or composite reaction. It does not exist. Why? Because there is so many. So, a composite or complex reaction is made up of a series of elementary steps. Each elementary steps would, would be having its molecularity. So, how can you talk about molecularity anyway out there? Hence, please remember that this would only be applicable for an elementary reaction and this is this I, I you know I should say this has this has no existence that means we cannot use the word molecularity for a composite reaction no we cannot use it right so this was uh, molecularity being discussed with reference to an elementary reaction right okay now how would you realize whether reaction is complex or not complex or composite reactions how would you realize whether a reaction is composite or not right the first thing is detection of reaction intermediates. Remember the benzyl cation C 6 H 5 C H 2 plus that is how we realized that it has an intermediate hence it is a composite reaction. But do understand that in many cases it is difficult it is difficult it is difficult to identify intermediates, identify or isolate intermediates. Hence, maybe this is not the best way of figuring out whether it is a composite reaction or not. Then what is the other thing? I will just mention it, we will carry on in the next class. The other thing is to look at the form of experimental rate equation. So, you look at this, you look at the form of the experimental rate equation, which I mean, so I will quickly write this one down. Suppose I have this following reaction C L O minus okay, equus plus I minus equus giving me C L minus aqueous plus I O minus aqueous right. If, if this reaction had been an elementary reaction, then I would have written that R is equal to K C L O minus I minus. But you know what? The observed experimental law is something like this, where R is equal to k c l o minus i minus over o h minus. You see this was this was the reaction this is the observed rate law and this is would have this would have been the rate law had the reaction been elementary. So, this discrepancy between the you know this discrepancy between this observed rate law and the elementary reaction rate law that would have you would have written down had the reaction been elementary tells you that the reaction is composite or complex in nature. More about this in the next class. Thank you.